definitely in her. My name is Ashley Quick. I am the Executive Director of Wildlife Education and Rehabilitation Center in Morgan Hill, otherwise known as WERC. So our bobcat program started in 1994 when WERC received its first bobcat kitten. At the time, this was an unusual rehabilitation request. Um, as a bobcat, they are a top predator and like most top predators in the environment that we have to rehabilitate, they can habituate very easily if they're raised by a human figure. Habituation is when any sort of wild animal is habituated or used to um, humans or what we're talking about here, humans, and that's never a good thing. Uh, humans, unfortunately, are not all safe for wildlife and wildlife can approach a person that maybe doesn't like them as much um, or doesn't respect them and maybe with the best intentions they want to help but they could put themselves in serious danger so it's always best to keep a divide between humans and wildlife um, and let wild animals do what they do best without human interference. So, with that said, we had to hide our human nature if this bobcat had any success in being released back into the wild. This included us getting dressed up in a full-blown bobcat mom costume. Uh, this required us to put on a head that looks like a bobcat, cover all of our body, even our feet, um, all so we looked like a bobcat. Uh, didn't stop there, we had to also cover our scent. We had to rub ourselves in rosemary and other natural scents to hide our human nature. So once we're in our Bobcat Mom costume and our scent is all covered, we have toys, much like you would play with your cat. Uh, in order to get them to play, you want to get these toys, kind of get their instincts going. This is what a cat kitten would do in the wild with its siblings or with its mother. It would be playing, pouncing, doing all these things. And that's a mimicking a natural behavior of it hunting in the wild. It's pretty remarkable to see how quickly they respond to these toys and how easily their instincts just are pulled out by these little behaviors. We have to gauge on their behavior how readily they will accept Bobcat Mom. Usually they're with Bobcat Mom for about six months of age until they start becoming a little bit more independent and don't really want much to do with us. Um, if they are under 12 weeks old they stay with us in a more captive control uh, temperature controlled environment and then we introduce them to an outside enclosure and from there they're with us for 11 months a pivotal part of our bobcat program is getting them seen by our veterinarian especially because we don't know exactly why these bobcats were orphaned so it could be something like they lost their mother their mother passed away in the wild or they ha suffer from sort of ailment or disease. And we want to make sure that our bobcats are always of the best of health, especially while in our care. Um, that entails 
quite a bit of work. It depends on their age. If they're younger, it's a lot easier to take them in. Uh, we get blood work, we get a fecal, we get all the sorts of inspections that any animal would get when they're going into their vet care. If they're older, that requires us to put them under anesthesia. They go through three different veterinary exams. We take them in, we do a full physical inspection, check their teeth, check their claws, check their everything, that everything's looking good. Um, with that said, we had a very unique case this year that one of our bobcats that came from the fire came in missing most all of its baby teeth. Uh, that is completely abnormal. Usually they lose these teeth one at a time, but he had lost almost every single one of them. That was very scary for us because we didn't know if there was some sort of physical trauma that had caused his teeth to fall out and maybe his adult teeth wouldn't return normally. So this was a special care case where we actually had to take him in get full dental x-rays of his teeth and luckily we did get them and we we're very excited to announce that he, all of his adult teeth are coming in perfectly normal and we are beyond excited that he's going to be able to be released to the wild. So bobcats are a very important species especially in our local environment. Um, they are a source of population control especially for smaller animals. Um, they play a very important role in keeping populations in check, especially of ground squirrels, small rodents, things like that. Without the bobcats, we, they would be overrunning our areas. Uh, the ecosystem works perfectly well with all the animals we have here, and bobcats play a very important role in doing that. We are permitted rehabbers through the state of California, and with that entails we have to return these bobcats within 10 miles of where they were originally found. That does come with its exceptions though, like right now we do have two bobcats from the fires in Northern California. Their home is getting decimated by fires, and to release them back into this environment would be a dangerous situation. So we will have to get special permission from the state in order to release them to a safer area. Um, in the wild, they definitely have a shorter lifespan, probably ranges from seven to 10 years if they're lucky. Um, unfortunately, they face a lot of danger out in the wild. Um, as of late, a big issue with bobcats has been rodenticide. Unfortunately, a lot of businesses and homes uh, are attracting rats and the easiest way for them to control these is by poisoning these animals. Unfortunately, the animal does not die right when it eats the poison. It wanders off somewhere else and dies. This makes it a very easy meal for any sort of predator, uh, including bobcats, and they will expend the least amount of energy possible to catch a meal, especially if it's a mother feeding young. She doesn't have that much energy already, so if she finds an easy meal like a debilitated rat after it's ingested poison, they then eat the poisoned rat and it accumulates, or what we say bioaccumulates in their system. Um, they start to, rat poison essentially is an anticoagulant, so it makes it so their blood doesn't clot as easily. Once their immune system is suppressed, they can suffer from things like mange, which gives them a really uh, bad coat appearance. It's a, t it's a type of skin mite that affects their coat and various other issues that they can suffer from. Um, bobcats right now are doing well in numbers in the area as far as we know. With the ongoing issues of development and human interactions, and usually the wildlife do not win in these interactions, they could definitely suffer uh, in years to come, but right now they are a pretty hardy species, so they are staying pretty good in numbers. So our bobcat program is pretty unique in how it works. We've had a very high success rate, in which in all of our bobcats that we put through the program have been successfully released and documented to be very wild in nature. So staying away from humans and reproducing on their own out in the wild, which we're very excited about because top predator like a bobcat, they don't reproduce very quickly throughout the years. They have a very low reproduction rate, what we call, so they have maybe a baby or two a year. So we're very excited that we can help these animals that maybe come into human interaction or get orphaned, um, and then we're able to return them back to the wild.